In this example, we're going to demonstrate how to use arrays in Code Assist to uh, save you some time and effort in your programming. So what we have here is a tank with some level sensors. When the liquid in the tank increases, eventually it will trip the high level sensor followed by the high high level sensor. So here in this example program, we're going to generate an alarm if the high high level sensor is tripped but the high level sensor is not tripped. Uh, that's not a possible uh, scenario um, unless the high level sensor has actually failed. All right, so let's get started. We're going to program a 750A81, enable web visualizations, create a structured text PLC PRG, and then go into your global variable list. And here's where we're going to declare our arrays. We're going to call it AX for array of bits. We call it sensor fail. And I'll start off just by this is how you would declare just a Boolean by itself. And then in between the semicolon and the Boolean is where you type in the array and the number of elements. So that's the syntax. And basically what an array is, is a, think of it like a spreadsheet, cells in a spreadsheet, where you can define um, what those uh, containers hold, what those elements hold. At this point, we're going to um, just cut and paste this and create um, a few more um, arrays. We'll do the high, high sensors declared the same way, and uh, also do the high sensors. So another big time saver when working with arrays is using constants. Here you can see we have uh, arrays declared for eight, enough for eight tanks. And wouldn't it be nice to just put a constant in here so we can come back later and modify that number if we want. So if we declare a section called var, var global constants, and we'll create um, a variable called IMAX tanks of type integer with an initial value of 8. Um, now we can just cut and paste that over the 8 and the compiler will automatically uh, interpret that. At this point it's time to actually program the function block that will generate the alarm for us. So we're going to go in and create an integer called i which we're going to use to index our arrays. And then we're going to create a new POU. Um, it's going to be a function We want to make sure we select the return type boolean and we'll make it in structured text and we'll call it level underscore alarm. If you recall the two inputs uh, for this function are the high high boolean and the high boolean and we'll, we'll use an if statement here so if we have high high sensor and we don't have a high sensor then that's our alarm condition. So we're going to return a true value for the level alarm. And then in all other cases, the uh, alarm will be false. I'll just put some comments here. Just going to resize the windows to make it easier to see all the code. And here's where we're going to type in our for statement to process all of our arrays. So for i equals 1 to our max tank value, which is 8. We're going to do um, all the code uh, in between the for and the end for. So here we're going to uh, basically call our function block that we created, so our, our sensor fail array. And we're using i to indicate the uh, array element. And that's going to be equal to um, what the return of our function block is. So our level alarm function, um, our high high, is the array pointing to the high high sensor and then the high sensor is pointing to the array of high um, sensor. So here you can see all of the code We're on one page here and then we'll compile it and we should see uh, zero errors. Okay so now we can go into simulation mode and test our program. Just gonna um, move this around a little bit so we can see all of the arrays in our program. And I'm going to start by tripping the high high, which I would expect to generate a sensor fail when I write the values out. And we did get the sensor fail, so that array element is working. Let's try another one here. Um, just make sure the alarm clears when we trip the high high. 
So we'll do array element six, and it did trip the high high, and we'll clear it. It shows that it's working, and could go back and try these other sensors. I'll leave that up to you, um, but you can see how this function block is working for all the arrays in the uh, program, saving you a lot of time. Thanks.